Your application is not production ready. I'm sure you might have heard this phrase from various people working in tech. So what does it actually mean? In this video, we'll look into what it actually means when somebody from your team says the phrase, it's not ready for production. And we'll also discuss what are the requirements for an application to be called production ready. The word production ready means differently to different people. You will hear different views based on their lines of work, whether they are developers, management people, or from operations team. For instance, for a developer, it might mean that a code can be considered production ready if it satisfied the features requirement, if it runs, if it passes all the test cases and if it's scalable and maintainable. But for a project owner, it might mean application can be considered production ready if the requested feature is present, it works and it brings some revenue into the. So all of this can be summarized into a single definition, which is an application can be considered production ready if it is ready to run in production environment. You might be thinking that definition doesn't even make sense, right? So hear me out. The reason I say this is because when deploying an application to production, you need to consider a lot of things like does it run? Does it has all the test cases present and all the test cases have passed or not? Is the code scalable and maintainable? Is it well documented? Does it have a proper release and rollback plan? Does it went through some level of security audit? Does it have acceptable performance or not? Is it automated? Do we have well tested backups or disaster recovery plans? Do we have some sort of observability in place such as metrics, logs and traces along with the key indicators which shows the service is performing well in production? Does it have a proper change management process in place? And if any application satisfies this condition, then it is ready to run in production. So here is a quick pop quiz. Do all the services needs to be reviewed for production readiness at such depth? Well, the answer is it depends. What? It depends on various factors like project timeline, company and team size, budget, scope of the project etc. The next thing we'll discuss is how does a company determine whether an application is production ready or not? Well, this is done using a process called production readiness review process or PRR in short. A production readiness review process produces a document which might be a small checklist or a fully comprehensive document where everything is defined in as detail as it can get on how to determine if a service is ready for production. It all depends on the company and their definition of production readiness standard. PRR process also differs from company to company. For example, Google's PRR process looks something like this. First of all, authors are selected to carry out the PRR process. Generally, they are the people from SRE team. Authors then communicate with different teams including the dev teams to come up with a process and goal and outcomes. This includes consulting with other teams which have more expertise in that subject matter to check if it follows the production best practices or not. All of these are compiled into a checklist. Once PRR authors create a draft checklist, it undergoes improvement and refactoring. Not everything listed in the draft will be addressed. Once refactoring is done, then SRE team who will eventually take ownership of the service will undergo knowledge transfer, training sessions, and exercises from the dev team. This training is led generally by PRR authors. Once training phase is completed, Progressive transfer of responsibility and ownership is taken by the SRE team. This includes parts like operations work, release management, access control. Now let's talk about why do we need a production readiness document. The main reason why companies should be creating a PRR document is it verifies that the service meets production requirements such as access control, security, release management process. It helps to improve reliability. It also helps to minimize incidents and also it helps to promote continuous improvement of services in production. So, a production readiness review is a must have process if a company wants to have a flawless release of any service and wants to maintain a service in production with less incidents. Let's have a look at a template PRR document. This is what a PRR document looks like. Here we can see the checklist being separated into different parts like architecture, operational risk and database. Each part has a checklist of actionable items which needs to be addressed as part of the readiness review. In a PRR document, we add almost all the list of things that can go right along with the list of things that might go wrong as well and determine if there is a process to address that. I'll leave a link to this document in the description below. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video.